Hi, my name is Jane Krause. I'm a big fan of project-based learning and I'm always looking for tools that help students engage in deep investigations. In my K-12 online presentation, I'll show folks how their kids can use the computational knowledge engine, Wolfram Alpha, and visualization tools such as Many Eyes and Tableau Public to construct and represent new knowledge. We'll do this in three acts. First, though, let me situate myself in the world for you. See the star over to the left? That's where I live, Eugene, Oregon. This is my town on a beautiful fall day. And this is me. I was in India for six weeks um, earlier in the year. And um, I chose this picture just because I was doing work in India um, around the topic of project-based learning. And I'd just like you to know from my view, um, it's taking off all over the world. And um, it was lovely to be able to go to India and introduce them to um, new methods. And um, I've done the same in Belgium, Egypt, all across the U.S., Mexico, a few different places. So I've enjoyed my travels um, and meeting teachers around the world on the topic of project-based learning. So we'll get started. As I said, we'll be looking at Wolfram Alpha um, and making meaning in three acts. Act 1, thinking critically and constructing knowledge in PBL. We'll just talk about how um, this is different from typical instruction and how um, when we drive deep investigations, what kinds of activities we engage kids in. Act 2, Exploring Knowledge Construction Wolf, Wolfram Alpha. We'll dig into the tool and see how you can use Wolfram Alpha to generate new information from which to make meaning. Act 3, Representing New Knowledge with Infographics. We'll look at it, several tools and um, one little quick trick for representing what you might derive from Wolfram Alpha, Alpha into a graphical representation that you can share with others. Let's get started. So Act 1, Thinking Critically and Constructing Knowledge in PBL. In project-based learning, you know, we talk a lot about helping kids do investigations where they make new meaning, but it's challenging to design learning experiences where they actually do this. So what do we mean by constructing knowledge or making meaning? Basically, it means coming to new understanding through direct experience. So examining a photograph for clues about an event would be knowledge construction. Reading about the same event in a textbook written by someone else would be knowledge attainment, but it's secondhand and often less powerful. In PBL, students ask original questions and their investigations yield information they have to int interpret to construct meaning. Wolfram Alpha, which we'll get to in a moment, is great for this. Here's a list, a short list of approaches that get at critical thinking. If your projects have students doing these things, it's more likely they'll be operating in the higher reaches of Bloom's taxonomy, analyzing, synthesizing, evaluating, and constructing new ideas. When I consult with teachers, I keep this list handy, and when we're looking at their project ideas, we try to amp them up by, by incorporating these kinds of um, activities within the project. So, for instance, let's think about a project where kids might be looking for um, identifying patterns or trends over time. Imagine kids... Um, a, a student is looking for trends in transportation in a state, and this could, by the way, be a great dive into systems thinking. He might want to find out whether there's a relationship between gas prices and the number of cars on the roads in Minnesota. In Wolfram Alpha, the student might write this. In this query, would say, Minnesota passenger cars in use versus price of a gallon of gasoline to which um, Wolfram Alpha responds with data in a graph showing the relationship of those data over time. So that's just one way that um, Wolfram Alpha works with data and represents it to you. So um, we'll get started with Wolfram Alpha. Some compare it to Google, a search engine, and it shares some similarities, but it differs in two fundamental ways. 
both which are in that descriptor computational knowledge engine. So first of all, it computes. Wolfram Alpha is based on the computational software program called Mathematica that's used in scientific engineering and mathematical fields and other areas of technical computing. So um, we'll dig in. And here we are in Wolfram Alpha. So they have a, as of this summer, have this really nifty um, home page full of examples of the kinds of queries that you can do with Wolfram Alpha. So we'll just look at one. As I said, it's used a lot for um, mathematical and scientific purposes. So for instance, you might be um, wanting to think about the area of a triangle with certain characteristics. You can use the scientific keyboard um, with the mathematical scientific notation that, um, in Wolfram Alpha to derive results like this. We'll just see what comes up. So the first thing that Wolfram Alpha does is it's, it takes your query and says how it interprets it, um, which is very helpful to know, and then gives you a result and often some kind of visual representation. And lots more inf information about um, radiuses, corresponding quantities, area, interior angle sums, different things like that. So we'll go back to the home page. And I'd just like to say a little bit about Wolfram Alpha. Um, it is free. It has a, it's a free version, but of course, like any of these kind of Web 2.0 apps, um, you get more when you go with a pro account. You can get started with the free account. Um, a teacher, um, an adult account is $5.99 a month, and a student account is $2.99. And what I might do in a classroom is set up a little kiosk with um, one or two computers with the student version running on it, because it's the kind of thing you drop in, you do your query, and you, you take off again. So it wouldn't have to be on every computer. So like I said, one side of um, Wolfram Alpha has to do with this computational side, right? It's really useful for science and math. You can get a sense of that here from what I showed. I know very little about this side of Wolfram Alpha. If you're familiar with its computational functions, I'd love to hear more from you. The other side of Wolfram Alpha has to do with that knowledge part. Wolfram Alpha draws from deep, rich databases of all kinds, and then you're able to mash up those data with um, different kinds of analyses. Um, when I was teaching World Studies back in the day, I'd have students search in the CIA World Factbook, and that's just one of the thousands of databases Wolfram Alpha draws from. Um, the assistant Siri on the iPhone pulls from Wolfram Alpha's databases. The good thing is is that everything um, you you find out when you do your query where the data come from and they're all refereed sites um, so it, it's good data. These, these um, data sets are where I found the most value for kids anytime they're investigating topics that involve data um, so let's just give it a spin. Let's start by, um, let's say kids are doing some kind of project having to do with um, diet. And let's look at per capita consumption of sugar in the U.S. So as you see, the first thing it does is it does an interpretation of your input. And this is really helpful because you want kids to make good queries and if you get an interpretation that obviously didn't understand the query, you can improve on that, right? So it's really good for kids to be able to um, get this result so that they can continue improving the, the um, searches that they do. So this is what you get. You get a result here, 152.5 pounds a person. You get a graph of change over time, which is interesting. Um, you find out other kinds of data, then it compares it to other foods. Um, but we were just focused mainly on um, this query. Let's make it more interesting though. Let's say this is actually a project across three countries and kids were comparing their diet with um, UK and Australia. All you have to do is add in the other countries and it should come up with a comparison. 
Okay, it corrected my um, spelling, which is nice, and interpreted <laughs> um, Australia without the R and put the R in. But then it shows here's the comparison. And, um, and then in the same order that we put the um, information in, it gives us these results. Now, these little tools down at the bottom are really great. Um, what they will do is tell you, you can enlarge the screen, you can download the data, you can customize and save this image, you can um, copy plain text, which is really useful, and um, there's some interactivity tools that you could look into, and you can just copy and paste this information as well. But one of the other things I like, and we'll come back to this later, is it also gives you a ratio. So it takes the largest number, which is the United States, and it gives it, it calls it one, and then shows in rank order proportionate um, consumption. So Australia is next at about 70% the ratio, and the UK at about 53% of, of um, the U.S.'s consumption. We're going to come back to this later when we talk about infographics and how we might use these data. So that was just a quick peek at one query that you can do in Wolfram Alpha. Um, I'd recommend that you browse around here graphically if you'd like, or um, go to the examples page to get a sense of all the different um, subject matter that is um, represented in Wolfram Alpha. Let's look at music for a minute. A musical instrument. So it says, imagine all these different queries that you could do related to musical instruments. You could compare um, instruments and look at the um, sonic um, features of it, you know, looking at the physics of sound in relation to these instruments. So here we're looking at a violin and a trumpet. It pulls up some Im images, it talks about the pitch ranges, the frequency range, um, the range of um, music notes that each of these plays, compares it to um, um, the ranges on a piano. Lots of nice um, um, graphical representations and a lot of data. So again, get started with um, Wolfram Alpha. Give it a look. Understand its limitations. Start figuring out what kinds of queries work best in it, and um, you'll have a good time. So let's get on with Act 3, representing new knowledge with infographics. Remember our quick query we did about sugar consumption in the U.S., U.K., and Australia? Well, I was able to make a infographic, or at least part of an infographic, um, using those data and the ratios that we found. So this is what I ended up with, but let me show you how I started. And we'll just make one really quickly. In PowerPoint, and I'll end our show here, in PowerPoint, I... Um, got this image out of the Creative Commons, of course, and um, I decided, well, I'll just copy and paste 100%, and then everything else was in relation to that. So let's take the second one, which was um, the second highest consumption was um, Australia, and we're just going to go in and change the scale, keep the aspect ratio the same, and it was um, at 70%, and the UK was at 52.5%, so I'll say 53, and I get my three items and just so that we don't have any visual funniness going on I'm going to align the bottoms and distribute the space between them there and I'm done um, so it's a really um, easy way if when you know those ratios to come up with a graphical representation that shows that and so here's back where we were and um, that's just a real nice little way to use PowerPoint really easily. 
So we'll go to Many Eyes. It's easier just to search it because it has a funny URL. It's a IBM URL. It's a it's a kind of a demonstration project of IBM. It's pretty neat, but we'll just search Many Eyes, and you'll see the URL the URL that comes up for it. It's kind of goofy. So there's the URL up there, but um. Many Eyes lets you do all kinds of different, um, you can explore visualizations, you can create your own visualizations by uploading data sets. All of this is free. Um, and then I, I like to just come and see everything that gets made in Many Eyes gets posted also to Many Eyes. So you get to see um, all kinds of interesting um, visualizations that people have made. Here's one, for instance, um, most popular dog breeds based on um, the American Kennel Association. So the discs are colored by dog breed, um, Labrador Retriever. Um, when you roll over, you can see the data that be, are behind the um, representation. Miniature Schnauzer, Shih Tzu's getting a little bit of love, but these are the top ten. Um, you can go in and you can manipulate um, the data if they are your own, but this is just one representation. Um, again, like I said, is the visualization types is really nice. It, so it's really helpful to say, oh, are you comparing a set of values? Then a bar chart or a block histogram might be best for you. Are you tracking change over time? Consider these tools. Seeing parts of a whole, are these sounding familiar? They're a little bit like our list of um, ways to get at critical thinking. Analyzing a text, seeing the world, um, all kinds of um, different tools you can use with many eyes. And then um, lastly, Tableau Public this is also free. You can buy a uh, Tableau itself, and it is a much more amped up um, um, tool for, for making graphical representations. But one of the things they have here that's great is a gallery, and you can see what other people have visualized to get you started. And they have a nice little training element, too. So we'll see what happens here. And there was one um, representation here, so here's a f the different kinds of things you can do, but there was one in business and real estate that I saw the other day that I thought buy or rent. So this kid, I, I, I don't know why I think it's a cool uh, kid, but um, somebody decided that to ask the question, if you buy a home, how long would it take before buying that house is cheaper than renting the same house? And then they did this representation. And again, we should be able to see where the data came from. And it's interactive. So we can mouse over and learn about the, um, oh, there's my town, Eugene Springfield. The break-even years would be 3.4. And then, um, then it ranks cities by that breakdown. But um, this is just one of the kinds of representations you can make in, um, in Tableau Public. So those are the kinds of tools that you can use. Um, this last slide I have, it provides the links to all of the tools. And I hope you'll get started with Wolfram Alpha. I'd love to know what you do with it, particularly on that scientific and computational side. And um, good luck. And finally, here are the websites that we use today, Wolfram Alpha, Many Eyes, and Tableau Public. I'm Jane Krauss. You can find me at jkrauss on Twitter and at my blog, reinventingpbl.blogspot.com. I share this blog with Susie Boss. She and I are authors of Reinventing Project-Based Learning, an ISTE publication that's been out for several years. We have a new book coming out in March 2013 called Thinking Through Projects, which is about driving deep investigations. So much of the work around project-based learning is about setting up projects, and we dig in. Um, so setting up good projects that will get at deep thinking, and then how you encourage that kind of thinking through the um, project cycle. So I hope you'll be looking for that too. Thank you for your time.